Pigs can't fly, but they can swim. Written by Kathleen Watkins, illustrated by Margaret Ann Suggs and published by Gill. It was a beautiful sunny morning as Piggine looked out the window of his little house beside the GAA playing fields on the Hill of Hoth. He picked up his mobile phone and called his friend Sammy Seal. Hello, Sammy, he said. It's the perfect day for a picnic on Ireland's Eye. Yes, it is. Come on down when you're ready, Piggine, Sammy said. And don't forget your life jacket. Just as Piggine arrived at the harbour, groups of people were walking down the pier. Well, would you look at that, said one of them. A piglet in a life jacket with a phone and a flute. Am I dreaming? That's Piggine, the harbour master said, who was standing nearby. He lives here in Hoth and is a fine piglet indeed. Hello there, Piggine said, smiling at the man. I live here on the peninsula. I like the word peninsula. And off he trotted down the pier to meet Sammy Seal and his four brothers, Sean, Seamus, Shorsha and Shane. The little piglet was very excited because the seals had promised to give him a swimming lesson. When he saw the five big seals in the water, Piggin climbed down the ladder and leaped onto Sammy's back. Ah, very cold splashes, he said, and gave a loud squeal and a shiver. Not at all, Sammy replied. All very well for you, Piggin said. You live in it. They moved out of the mouth of Hoth Harbour with Sammy's four brothers swimming in pairs behind them. The pod of seals moved quickly and gracefully in the water. Piggin held on tight to Sammy but managed to wave a trotter to say farewell to the harbour master. Oh look, Sammy said, the children are doing a sailing course. They're Sive, Nana Kit's granddaughter, Piggin said. Oh no, she has capsized. Don't worry, she could not be safer, Sammy said. She is wearing her life jacket and the crash boat is there to pick her up. She is a good swimmer too, Piggine said. You must teach me to swim when we get to the island. After a few minutes, they arrived on Ireland's Eye, where Sammy and his four brothers helped Piggine with his swimming lesson. At first Piggine was scared, but he knew he could do it. He took off his life jacket, climbed off Sammy's back and moved his trotters as fast as he could. Piggine made dreadful snorting noises <coughs> as the sea water got up his nose and into his ears, but he kept trying. Pigs can't fly, but they can swim, he thought, as he began to swim faster and faster. The seals all whistled and clapped. They were delighted to see the little piglet swimming in the sea. I'm learning fast. This is wonderful. I love it, especially floating on my back, he said, while blowing a spray of seawater out of his mouth. Can I dive off the rocks, Piggin asked the seals. As often as you like, the seals said in unison. Piggin jumped and dived many times. Then the seals gave him a water ballet display. He had never seen anything like it before. It's called synchronised swimming, Sammy said. The seals practice their synchronised swimming every day. Piggin took photos with his mobile phone. Nana Kit will want to see these, he said. When the seals finished their display, the little piglet played the flute for them and danced to music on his phone, lifting his trotters high off the ground. The seals were delighted. They clapped and cheered and swam in circles with delight. We are so lucky to be here having such a good time, Piggin said. We'll have to come again soon. They had a delicious picnic and then they all felt very, very sleepy. They lay on the rocks and closed their eyes. The only sounds to be heard were the waves washing up on the shore and an aeroplane overhead. 
The sound of the plane woke Pegeen. There's the green bird on its way to Dublin Airport, he said, and I'm going to be on one soon. Tell me more, Pegeen, Sam, Sammy said, stretching after his nap. I'm going to London on my holidays. Pegeen's story was interrupted by the noise of the fishing boats coming home. Quickly, Sean, Seamus, Shorsha and Shane, Sammy called. Let's go back to Hoth Harbour for some fish. When they arrived at the harbour, Kevin from Nicky's place rang a bell and came out of the shop with buckets of fish heads and tails. The seals had a feast. Dozens of people gathered at the edge of the pier to look at the seals, including some of the children from the sailing course. Piggyn said thank you to Sammy and his brothers. That was the best day I ever had. Thank you so much. Piggyn could hardly hear his own voice because of the deafening noise of the excited and greedy seagulls overhead. When he turned to go, he saw something on the ground. It was a phone. Oh, excuse me, sir, is this yours? Piggyn asked a man in a red jacket standing beside him. The man turned around. It must have slipped out of my pocket, he said. Thank you very much, Piggyn. What a great fellow you are. I'm lucky that you found it. It's a pleasure, sir, said Piggyn, and off he trotted to get on the little train that would take him to Nanakit's home near the Bailey Lighthouse. On the way, Piggyn wrote a thank you note to the seals. I could send a text, he thought, but it is always nice to receive a note. He called his friend Sally Siegel on his mobile phone, who flew down and took the note in her beak to deliver it to the seals at the harbour. Piggyn was tired when he arrived at Nana Kit's cottage. Your hair is lovely, Nana Kit, he said, smiling at his good friend. I got it done in the village earlier, she said. Come in and tell me about your day. You can stay the night if you like. I have a bed made up for you. Piggyn sat down in one of Nana Kit's big cosy armchairs and looked at the tea table she had prepared for him. There was a beautiful tablecloth and napkins with delicate china cups and delicious things to eat. This is perfect, Nana Kit. Thank you. I'll just put the kettle on, she said, and you can tell me about your day. Nana Kit came back with the teapot. We will leave it there for a moment, she said. There was no reply. Nana Kit looked at Piggyn fast asleep in the armchair with a great big smile on his face. She covered him with her best blue blanket and sat down to pour herself a nice cup of tea. <laughs>